and welcome to Ask an Old GM. Ellen Edwin, thank you for the subscription. I'm Sable's husband. I stream on her channel. Alright, um, this is my Ask an Old GM stream where I answer game mastering questions and, uh, Okay, that'll be better for the microphone. Right. Do I remember your spice question? No. I smoke a lot of pot. Ask it again, James. Thanks for the hydrate, Moonflower. World Anvil Raid, oh my lord. Wow, thank you for the raid. Light up the forge indeed. How is everybody today? Welcome, welcome, welcome. For the raid world anvil how is everybody this is my ask an old gem stream all right this is the stream where i answer gemming questions all right from 40 years of experience hello tillers hello geeks hello second hand how you doing hello heffy hello mergendor Recon, that's cool, man. All the questions, Tillers, yes. Uh-oh. Hello, Eli. Uh-oh, World Anvil. What's better than game mastering for people who write novels? Uh, writing novels. Ah, right. When you're saying sending stuff on spices by ship instead of plane. Alright. Um, would it increase the cost? Technically? No, because it's cheaper to send things by ship. Planes cost a lot of money to fly, a serious amount. Right? A helicopter costs like a thousand dollars an hour to fly it. 
right? A plane runs probably 250. When you get into all the maintenance and stuff, just a regular, like, twin engine plane. Thanks, Mergendor. It's, a uh, Sirenscape. Uh, pirates would increase the price for everything because you know pirates don't selectively choose oh no we're not robbing that ship it's got sugar on it alright they don't know what you're carrying so they just alright you know yeah pirates steal cargo they steal everything alright so would the pirates increase the cost yeah but no more than they would increase the cost of shipping anything I mean, depending on how serious the pirate lanes are, right? If you've got one particular uh, trade route that is particularly plagued by pirates, then the stuff on the other end of that trade route is going to cost more. Right? Or they'll abandon the trade route and the place on the other end of it will just die off. Right? If you get too many pirates... Right? If pirates are just enough to make it dangerous, then it'll just increase the cost of everything. Hello, Emily. What's my favorite RPG setting? Oh. Star Wars, I think. Well, today's prices take into account the fact that, one, the dollar is worth a lot less, right? Um, and two, most of the shipping is done by planes now, right, of things like that, because it's, you know, fresher spices are better. All right. Thanks for the follow. Matissimo? Mutamiso? Thanks for the follow, Recon. Manager running. Yeah, it's because they're not time-sensitive tillers. Your books aren't going to go bad by ship. All right? If you ordered flowers from the United States, they'd send them by plane. Okay, Gala. Okay, Siobhan. I need to wait four to six weeks for my Piazza orders too. Alright, because they're not a priority. Okay, Ellen. You say, I'm creating a game from the viewpoint of a manager running in a fantasy item shop. Any ideas what items I could sell as merch? Uh, I would say gizmos. Yeah, it's true, Tillers. Right. Okay. What second hand said? I never played that.
Yeah, exactly. Recon, you're exactly right. At a certain point, piracy would cover a, a naval effort. Okay, Emily. I once got, uh, you guys remember 3.5 edition, well, third edition actually, Savage Species? Right. You guys remember that book? I got that book six weeks early, before release date. Because it had accidentally been sent to stores six weeks before its release date. Right? But, and it was not supposed to be sold, but I knew the store owner, so he sold me one. Right? And I brought it home and I set it by my desk. I went to take a nap. And my kids knocked my coffee off the ta desk onto it. I hadn't even opened it yet. That sounds delicious, Emily. You French, you put cheese on everything. I think that's great. Oh, a cousin was born today. That's awesome news. <laughs> and one yesterday. Okay. Uh, uh, the twins? Neat. Ellen knows who you are, Sable. Right? They came here to see you. <laughs> wow, four more next week. No population problem in your family. Hey, Gabby. It is good. I are gooder.
that's good, Daz. That takes time. I like it when there's crossover. Especially when they don't figure that they're worshipping the same god. That's even funner. How many Jews, Christians, and Muslims have killed each other and they all worship the same God? <laughs> no. But the medieval people didn't see it that way. or as I like to call them, the wars of stupidity. To be distinguished from other wars of stupidity. the sound. That's why I host this stream, just to entertain Daz. I bet it's so, Dad. Are you, uh... You're sort of missing part of it when you just watch me smoke my pipe. stupid Cayetan. I think it's still stupid to classify toys as for any gender of child. I played with a lot of dolls when I was a kid. Right? And uh, my wife played with a lot of Tonka toys. Trucks and stuff. So is that stupid? Yes. It's stupid because why classify it at all? parents classify what they consider good toys for their kids. Exactly. Exactly. I know so many young girls who played with their brother's donkey trucks. I know a few of them who grew up to be like tow truck drivers and stuff. <laughs> I 
I know one who grew up to open her own tow truck company. And before you ask, no, she's not a lesbian. Legos, yeah, Legos are definitely a unisex toy, I gotta say that. I understand that, Kayatan. Playmobil too, yep. Hello, Aegon. How you doing, mate? Yeah. I am Funky Doo. Yeah, pink Legos. I keep telling people, that is such a manly color. I mean, pink is the color of Jove. You don't get much more manly gods than Jove. should be able to wear pink as a man. It's a man's color. <laughs> Women didn't worship Jove. Yeah. You still only be worn by men. Okay, James, have a good lurk. Yes. I'm reclaiming pink. Women can't have it. It was ours first. Mm-hmm. think of how tabletop RPGs have, have changed over the years. I think they have evolved a lot. Right? Um, and uh, I like the more diverse nature of them now in mechanics, not in flavor, because that's always been that way. Right? But... <laughs> Emily. Right, um, I like the evolution. Right, I like what D and D became. I like what Pathfinder became. I like what 
some of the more modern games are like, like Roin. You know, Judge Dredd. Yeah, exactly what Aegon just said. That's very true too, Kayatin. People don't think that D&D is satanic anymore. That's always... Okay, Natalia. Yeah. Oh no, there's way more content for RPGs than there used to be. When I first started, there were about two tabletop RPGs in existence, right? And they were Warhammer and uh, Swords and Sorcery, which is the predecessor to D&D. &D. Right? When I first started game mastering, I started game mastering Dungeons and Dragons, the very first basic old red box set. Right, but, um, you know, I've game mastered a lot of systems since then, right? And when I started game mastering, there was D&D &D and there was advanced D&D, &D. you know, basically, that's what you had. No, I would not find that culturally insensitive. Your character's Canadian. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like saying if uh, I had a character who was Cree in a game, in a book, who said something Cree. Right? I know a lot of Cree. I was raised among the Cree. Right? I speak a little Cree. Right? But I think if you had the Lone Ranger say it, it's offensive. But if you have Tonto say it, any advice for someone who's thinking about starting GMing? Yes, relax. Good night, Tillers. All right. Yes, relax. That's my biggest thing. All right? You're not. You can't really screw it up. And be firm. Not unyielding, but firm. 
right? If a situation comes up in your game and you've got to make a ruling on it on the spot, make a ruling and stick to it. All right? You can change it later or retcon in a new system later when you understand more or whatnot. But if you rule that uh, you have to use climb instead of rope use for climbing rigging, and you they later find out that it's rope use, well, you retcon it in. Yet, yeah, the more you relax, let it take on a life of its own. Hey, no worries, James. Yep. Yeah, like Aegon says. Yes, that that's a big thing. Yeah, the the, the players are co-creators of the world. They're not your opponents or problems. All right. You know, so they are, as Recon says, immensely creative people who will do creative things, right? And uh, you sort of got to try to adapt to that, right? But realize, like Aegon says, that you're going to make mistakes, accept it, and be honest about them. If they say, what well, was it, rope use or climb to get up the rigging? And you say, I don't know, Right? Then be firm but flexible. Say, I'm going to say rope use. Right? And like I say, if you find out later that it's climb, don't worry about it. Just tell the players, oh, by the way, I was wrong. It isn't rope use that you use to climb rigging. It's climb. Right? And then they know and you know. Right? Um, the big thing is accept no arguments. Don't over prep, yeah, but accept no arguments from your players. Your players say, well, the rules say on such and such of such and such that, you know, if my character farts three times and they can shoot three lightning bolts instead of two, right? You know, don't listen to them. Say, well, it might say that there, but this is my game. And I say, you can't do that. can't be too hung up on the rules right if your players have more experience than you have they might try and run rough shot over you no I don't think you should kick them out to say no we're not doing that right I I just be firm with them see this is my best thing that I've ever done right I used to have a bad rules lawyer in my campaign her name is Siobhan used to I say listen to what they have to say yes but be firm don't broke argument with you All right Siobhan used to be a bit really bad rules lawyer in my games All right she would say well it says on the book in this page and that page and I'd say it says on the book on the front page that this is your game All right and she got used to that sometimes the rules aren't going to be the same. Yeah. Exactly. What Recon said, you're very right, Recon. Thank you. Right? Um... It tends to be a thing inexperienced players do when they feel that someone is being cheated. Well, Travis was just an antagonist. He wasn't a rules lawyer, he was an antagonist. The only person I've ever kicked out of my game. And that's because my players gave me the ultimatum of it was me or it was him or them. 
they were all leaving or he was leaving. Alright, so... Of course, he did leave me all his books. So what can I say? Yeah, she's the reverse of her rules lawyer. She's annoying to new GMs that way, which is another player you got to worry about. You've got the Siobhan rules lawyer, you got the Sable rules improviser. Yeah, she would be an issue if we weren't if she weren't very experienced as both a player and a GM too. Alright, so remember, keep control. It's like riding a horse. You don't keep the reins pulled tight or the horse gets all spooked. Alright, if you're kicking it in the ribs and pulling the reins tight, then the horse gets all spooked and then it screws up, right? If you let the reins relax and you don't kick it in the ribs too much, the horse will just go. Yeah. Which was written into the first edition AD&D Dungeon Master's Guide. Recon? Not exactly that, but sentimentally that. Yep, exactly what Recon said there, too. Something like that, Siobhan. But what Recon said is exactly right. Give your players a push and then let them and gravity take its effect. Yeah, exactly what Recon said, right. <laughs> Kender suck. You're welcome, Cayuton. Because they only exist to be disruptive to a gaming group. Nobody who plays them has ever played them correctly. Right? The only correctly done Kender out there was in the book. Right? And nobody can mimic that without acting exactly like Tasselhoff Burfoot. 
right? And, uh, you know, so, okay, see in 444 words or so there, Eli, right? So I find that they only ever exist to disrupt a game. They do not exist in Sable's world, so I have no worries about that. Yeah. That's awesome, Cayetan. You could have fun with that. I bet you they acted exactly like Tasselhoff Burfoot, Agon. Kender are annoying. They serve no functional purpose. It's why we ditched halflings out of our world entirely. Because there is nothing in the world's makeup that can't be made up by gnomes, dwarves, or goblins that halflings do. That's awesome, Aegon. I really, uh... I'm amazed. I've never seen it. Yeah, it's true, Recon. Yes, annoying can work. I've had some annoying characters before. Right? Exactly. If everybody wants to do some dice rolling on random tables or whatever, Recon, that makes sense. Well, you've done then, Natalia. Quit. Sure. I can see that there. Dazzle Cat. Yeah, perpetual kleptomaniacs. fail English. Yeah, Belvarn was different. Belvarn could be annoying, but he had good qualities too. annoying characters can be fun but not if they're kender <laughs> yeah I agree with Recon's statement there more experienced players have generally learned to yes and especially when they with people they know and like as players
Take a break for the night, Natalia. It's late, and you've written a lot. I thought wild sorcerers in D&D were uh, interesting. Wild magic in itself was an interesting concept. Uh, the chaos character that she re that Diane refer Sable referred to was a wild mage, right? Um, right, and uh, sometimes the sheer idiosity of it is fun. Yeah, Forest is a little... Forest was a cipher. Now, if you guys ever played Planescape, you'd understand what that is. All right, basically, he just did the first thing that came into his head. All right, he never second-guessed himself. All right. Yeah, I remember Holstein. I'd love to see an updated setting for that book too, actually, Aegon. Okay, good night, Cayetan. <laughs> That's awesome, Recon. That's That's fun. I play a droid in our Star Wars game that everybody is beloved of. <laughs> He's a little cyclonic. himself, gets programming, tries to pickpocket the characters, stuff like that, right, but... <laughs> Grey Jedi Ewok, that sounds cool. It's what we are as Grey Knights. In, in the game I'm running. I'm running an advanced game for characters we played a while ago in a Sith campaign. Right? Who became Revenite Grey Knights. And uh, just before the game ended, they, they had infiltrated the Jedi Order. Right? And so I took them and through hyperspace mishap advanced them I think it's 1927 years. I'm not sure, though. Don't correct me on that. All right. Uh, to year three uh, after the reunification, all right, which is the year of the Naboo incident. Yeah, exactly. Says Sable. All right, Recon, you have a great night, mate. Come back anytime. Yeah, nice to meet you and had a blast. Oh, yes. They've already met him and they know he's a Sith Lord, too. Right. And he knows that they know. 
They already killed Darth Maul. And Darth Maul's twin brother, which according to canon uh, existed, but... Yeah, you're up to 47 pages, time to stop, Natalia. Yeah, it's the only storyline that does make sense of that stuff. Yeah, Darth Maul had a twin brother. <laughs> no, his name, he never became a Darth. Uh, according to canon, Maul killed him to become Sidious' apprentice. All right, I just said that he didn't, so they had to fight them both. And this time they killed Maul, not the brother. The brother, they chopped his arm and leg off and kicked him down a hole, but... Yeah. Darth Plagueis the Wise. Trickster wisdom. feeling there, Natalia. Also, according to canon, Darth Maul didn't die when they chopped him up and threw him down that mining shaft. According to canon, he lived and dragged his upper half out of the out of the shaft and uh, got cybernetic replacements. Yeah, I think he should have gone with it, too. The Phantom Menace, indeed. Then they wouldn't have had to come up with Snoke for the other movies. By the way, people, I'm quitting at three today in an hour. I have to take my mom-in-law to an appointment and I'm experimenting with a shorter Friday stream. Yeah, exactly, Aegon. Oh yeah. CAT scan. They want to check her for her balance, I think.
Okay. Well, you won't miss much, James. I'm going to be quitting about 15 minutes after that, so... Yeah, I remember Beverly Hills Ninja. I thought that was funny. As a martial artist, I seriously enjoyed that movie. Yeah, it starred, um... Who was that? Can't remember his name. Died. It's a tragedy. Chris Farley, yeah, right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay, I'll be right back, guys. I'm going to take a break here and painkiller.
Welcome back. How is everyone now? Emily's gone to get her food. Hello, Realm. Welcome. Or have you been here the whole time lurking? takes a lot of work as like you'll be at that for a while I finally finished classifying nouns and verbs to all my words in my goblin dictionary today that's an accomplishment about 4,500 words Back with food, yay! Did Realm disappear again? Welcome anyways, bud. Ah. Thanks for the subscription, Barbarossa. We'll take those Bezos bucks. You betcha. Sparkles today. Oh, yes, Natalia's books for pre order. Book, rather, Book of Secrets. Excellent, Sparkles. Getting your yoga, that's no good. Tigers are very huggy, Emily. Just let you know that.
Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, they really are just big kitties. I used to exercise two of them, eh? It was my job to take them out and play with them and walk them around. And You can watch a tiger go out a medicine ball just like you can watch a, a kitten go out a ball of yarn. you on the right there, eh? Okay. It's more me on the left. Naming an empire, okay? Who lives there? people call themselves what do other people call the people there that's the thing has got to answer right because the empire is just named after that the ottomans were what everyone called those people ottomans right so their empire was the ottoman empire the persians right you know the mongols right So if you want to know what to name your empire, you have to decide what people in the empire are called. Right? Okay, what are the people like there? If you had to describe them, how would you describe them? Are they like Celts? Are they like Romans? Are they like uh, Mongols with trains? 
Jaha. Based around Franco-Germanic peoples. Okay. So, uh... Emily might be a really good person to ask. Right? Um, is this... This is an alternate Earth you're on? Or your own world? Completely fictional world, okay. Alright, um... Did they have a famous ancestor? Right? A race progenitor, as it were. Talk to you later, James. I hope you feel better, brother. Clovis. Sure. There's a very Franco-Germanic name. Okay, Serene, use that one, the second spelling, right? And call it the Serene people. Right, you could even call it Serenia or something. Right, and it would be the Serene Empire. Yeah. It is rather Latin. <laughs> okay, then there you have it. Serenian Empire. We've just come up with one. There are half elves, why not half dwarves? Well, Athos tried to address that with their mules, but um, I, I've always assumed there were. Hmm. Yeah, now you gotta do some yoga, Emily. Good, half dwarf. Good thing.
Okay. No worries, Sparkles. Kajan, thanks for the follow. If you got any game mastering questions or game questions in general, Kajan, just feel free to ask them. Gaming's been going great. We're going to be playing Pathfinder tonight rather than our Star Wars game. But, yeah, not uh, that's a bad thing. That's a good thing. But, yeah, it's been going great. Alright. Um, the online game has been postponed a couple of weeks, but it's been going. Star Wars is awesome. No, I have not. Thanks, Taze. I am so sorry. Alright, I know you're counting on me to do this in a timely fashion, but my mother-in-law has been in and out of the hospital, and my mother's been in and out of the hospital, and... You know, I've just been... I'm sorry. I won't be offended at all if you keep asking. Try not to be offended if I haven't done it yet. <laughs> That's all I ask. Please keep asking me because that will get me on my... Keep it in my mind so that eventually it'll get through this stoner brain of mine and I'll actually read it and... You know, when I have like a half hour that I'm just sitting doing nothing... And I think about it. That's fair. That's totally fair, Anxiase. Should you work on the name of the mountains or do a quick tooltip on what Marcher Lords are? What the Marcher Lords are? Alright, um... 
do a tool tip. Always do your tool tips. Uh, my mother-in-law is fine. My mother is on the out. It's just the way it is. Um, she may be coming home here in the next little while. She may not. Mergendor, thank you for the subscription. Ah, uh, it's harder on my sister, I think. Or it's going to be. Hey, it's cool. Don't worry, you know. It's cool. I just got a lot of responsibilities at the moment, so I haven't had a chance to do much reading. That's all. read on my phone at all. My eyes are too bad for that. <laughs> I'm almost blind, Angstazi. I'm so bloody. <laughs> all I do on my phone is look at pictures on Wish. Hey, I thank you for that, Dazcat. That's, uh... I'm sorry to hear that you had to go through that twice already. Alright, um... I've gone through it a couple, a few times so far. Yeah, that makes sense. Sparkles. Thanks, Daz. That's yeah. I think Sable could really use that. Her mom is doing okay, but hey, it's she gets worse all the time, right? My mom, like, I'm amazed she lasted this long. To be honest with you. Sheer evil is what keeps that woman, woman alive. Only the good die young. Is that, yeah, is that short enough to work as a tooltip? That's the only thing. My mom is at home because she refuses to go into one. Right? Um, and ends up in the hospital like every week for three days. Right? And uh, my mother in law is in assisted living. Right? So she's better off. She's got more people around her to help her out and stuff. But. Yeah. 
That's what happens when you get older. What system? Kajin? The dark eye. Oh, huh. Oh. Trying to remember. Ooh. Trying to remember that system. Uh, I'm sure I've played it. That's the. It's it's a European system, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Schwartz. The Schwartz. Or something like that is see you later Mergendor catch you later yeah the short thug all right um I played it once when I was in Germany in the 80s. The first version, or in the 90s. Was I in there? Yeah. I don't know how that's pronounced. All right, my German socks. I haven't spoken it since I was 13. That's Schwartz of. Good enough, okay. Yeah, uh, what did I think would be best to highlight on it? Um, now, like I say, I only played it once, so I don't remember. Do they have a skill system in that one? Skills and proficiencies?
I remember the magic system was very uh, loose. very fluffy it was very uh, role play based or at least that's how the game master did it when I was playing it right right um, yeah, you could highlight that a little bit, how uh, we needed less rules around those sorts of things then, right? It was left much more up to the imagination about uh, things like magic. Even the magic in, like, uh, the old D&D books, like some spells had one line, does 1d4 damage. You know, that was the whole line to the spell. Right? You know? And, uh... We needed it less. We imagined more. But then again, we had way less video input into our brains to give us the picture of all this stuff, too. Right? Um... You know, so... I mean, in the 90s, we barely had Nintendos, you know? Like... You know, we're talking 8-bit graphics. We don't get, you know, the realistic level of graphical interpretation that they've got in video games now. Right, where you can play a character and honestly believe you're playing Luke Skywalker. You know? Right? So... Right? There was a lot more left to the imagination back then. All the game systems were much more simplified. Oh yeah, way harder. The bar exam was way higher back then. <laughs> But when you got them, they were good. sort of interesting that a lot of props we had a lot of props that they came with you get like a lot of yeah guys, I think if you've got enough information from me there, Kajin, I think I'm going to raid somebody and go. I've got to get my mother-in-law to the, her CAT scan appointment in 45 minutes, so. Huh. Hey, no problem. Anytime, Kajin. Thanks for the follow. Anybody got anybody we want to raid?
I do this every Tuesday and Friday, Kajin. Uh, Tuesday from an hour ago until two hours from now. And Friday from two hours ago until now. I'm not sure where in the world you're located, so... Yeah, nobody on, eh? Okay, we can raid Kindar 11. There's nobody else on. Well, I've got two, and they're both playing games. You know, so... Want to run the raid table? Okay, thank you very much. Remember our raid shout? Our raid shout is prepare to be boarded. We are Sable's privateers. We'll be back tomorrow with Right with Aaron. Alright, and that happens from 2 o'clock. Pacific time that is 9 o'clock UTC p.m. until 4.30 that is 11.30 UTC yeah that's what I'm saying too eh? yeah, mine are all playing non role playing games okay Thank you for the raid. Welcome, everyone. I am Kendar, the Tiger Rights, who currently plays. Welcome to be boarded. If everybody boards me, something my, my chair is gonna break. Oh, he's not even there. Thank you for the follow, Daz. I know what I want. Yes, actually, that is what I want. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Whoa, what?